Well, what's going on, guys? It's Jake here, and today I'm going to teach you how to mod this thing. Extreme Rate was kind enough to actually send me out not one, but two, two brand new shells with buttons and really everything included. Thank you, Extreme Rate. I already use their products. I don't think I have anything really bad to say about their products. They are on the expensive side a little bit, but they're high quality stuff. This one is the NES style Game Boy Color Shell, but we're not actually gonna work on this today because the Game Boy Advance doesn't really fit in there. Plus I don't have the right mod kit for this one, but we will work on this on a future Mod Monday stream. You know, you should subscribe so you don't miss that. <laughs> I don't think that was supposed to happen, but we have a clear purple shell, not quite atomic purple, but this is even more purple to me, which I love purple. These shells do come with a one year warranty. I don't know exactly what's included on this, but everything from extreme rate, I believe comes with a one year warranty. You literally don't need anything but the motherboard from this. Comes with a screen lens, it's got new stickers. You got the screwdrivers included, membranes, buttons, power switch, even the bracket for the uh, IPS display, brand new set of screws, a game cart shield, and even a disassembled battery connector. Let's start off disassembling the Game Boy we've got. I will be running through this step by step today. Since there are quite a few new people here, I figured I might go over in a little more detail how to do the better Game Boy Advance model, really the better Game Boy model in general. Like I said, it does come with the tools if you want them or need them. They aren't the best though. It's better than nothing, especially because most people don't have a tri-wing screwdriver. I do recommend the iFixit Protect Toolkit if you are gonna do this a lot, like me, because it just has everything you need, but it is not necessary, and I'm not affiliated with them. So we've got six tri-wing screws all along here to take out, so let's do that. And then I like to organize the screws exactly how they are on the Game Boy, so you don't forget. And once you have those six out, do not just tear off the back because we got one more Phillips head right here. It is a different color, so you don't have to worry about accidentally putting the wrong screw in there. And taking that apart, this thing is pretty gross. Thankfully, we have a nice clean shell. Sometimes there are three screws in these. This is the extra screw hole here, but ours only has two in them. I, I, I don't know why sometimes there's three, sometimes there's two. Uh, it doesn't really matter. They're so close to each other. It doesn't make it more or less secure. But after you get those screws out, you can pull these tabs up here. Just pull them up. This is why I didn't cut my fingernails before. You can also use some tweezers. That's also a good thing to use that spudger for that comes with the the kits and then you should be able to just pull this right out still would we'll do it nice and gentle sometimes you're going to get the uh, membranes to stick to your game boy it's normal it's just probably dirty and this one not too bad on the inside i've seen much much worse overall it's pretty clean we're still going to clean it though uh since everything is provided by extreme rate we don't need that <laughs> unless you do end up using the uh, the same original screen. We're gonna mod this today, so not gonna worry about it. Next, we're gonna take some 99% isopropyl alcohol. I would go with 90, like anywhere 90% up. 70% is okay if you don't have anything. It's actually totally fine. Just don't completely soak it and make sure it's on 100% dry before you turn anything on. The higher the percent, the faster it's gonna dry, the less water is in it. That's why I go with 99%, but it is really strong stuff. I'm just so used to it that it doesn't really bother me anymore. I will douse the crap out of it here. Because again, it's 99% and I know what I'm doing. If you want, you can also just spray it directly to the toothbrush. I recommend using a toothbrush, probably should say that. Don't be extremely rough, but you don't have to be 
like super super soft with it and make sure you get both sides if you care about these numbers staying on might want to avoid spraying it directly on there I don't care about that stuff. I don't know why people would, but to each their own, you know? It doesn't affect me, but it also doesn't affect you if I spray it off. People say I'm too rough when I clean my electronics, uh, and I think that they should mind their own business. When I break stuff, you can say I told you so. It's none of your concern. If you want, uh, you can always go over it with some uh, canned air. This one you might want to be a little bit more careful because this can be pretty powerful sometimes, especially when it's a fresh can. Uh, fun fact, they actually recommend you don't blow into the cart readers. They say that because of spittle. Uh, they don't want you putting your saliva in the cart reader. So apparently people spit into their cartridges, corrode their readers, I don't know. Uh, I've never had that problem, so. Now that that's all clean, I like to actually just get out a paper towel and lay that down. I, you could also just clean your workspace, but it gets, it's not terrible. This is actually pretty good. It's easier just to cover it up with a fresh paper towel, and then we can get out the shell. Because you don't want to get your nice new shell dirty, right? So here it is. Oddly enough, there's a link port cover never seen a link port cover for a game boy advance the mod kit we're using today is the uh the ips v2 mod kit what i like to do first is take the screen lens actually i should say first we're not actually going to use the screen lens from extreme rate because actually eh, this might actually be glass i think this is glass yeah this is a glass screen lens but it's not cut for the uh, the mod kit. Here's the version for the mod kit. The uh, screen hole is much bigger because the screen is that much bigger. This comes with uh, pretty much any IPS mod kit you'll get, so don't worry about it. I put that down and I put it the shell over it right where it fits. I don't stick it down yet because we're gonna put the screen into the spot first. This is the best way to not get fingerprints or any dust on the inside. Get all of our wires out. Since these shells are made for mod kits as well as the regular stuff, we don't need these spacers. I'm gonna put these wires off to the side for now. And we'll actually <laughs> go back and do this first. So this is the, uh, the thing to stick your screen to the shell and it's gonna line up just like this. It's a little different. There's a bunch of cutouts if you're using another uh, another shell. Since this is made for modding, you don't have to worry about the cutouts. And we're just going to go ahead and peel this and put this in the very top left corner. Slide that down. Press it down with your finger everywhere. And then we can lift this up. Should be able to just push right through. <laughs> it came off a little bit. Don't worry about it too much. If it's not perfect, like this isn't perfect, it's fine. I promise. Then we're going to take our tweezers and peel the rest of the peel. Let me get that with my fingers. Boom. And before we stick this down, I'm actually going to put the rest of the screen together. What I mean by that is we're gonna grab this sticker here, you attach this to the back. Boom. Now the screen is insulated so you won't it won't short anything out because metal can short things out. I'm gonna flip this down. Try and find that locking spot it is very difficult. There we go. Now it's secured. That connector is the biggest pain in the butt. There's this piece right here. We're gonna wanna break that off. I like to use flush cutters in these situations, but it honestly looks thin enough that you should just be able to snap it off with your finger. And you can. 
It is that simple. That little post is there just in case you do use the original screen so you can keep it lined up. So now we can peel this guy back here. Well, let's pause for a second. I guess we should have done the soldering first. Uh, it really doesn't matter, but we can go ahead and do that real quick. If you've never soldered before, I, I would recommend practicing on something else because the ribbon cable is the expensive part of this. Uh, I believe a replacement ribbon cable goes for about 45 and these kits are a total of 60. The screen is not that expensive. It's about a $10 screen. So you don't want to mess this up. Also, I, I don't recommend soldering on directly on the screen, but I'm a professional. So do as I say, not as I do. Before we even turn on the soldering iron, I'm gonna go put some flux on these pads here. This is highly recommended to use flux if you are a beginner for soldering. Really anytime flux is great. My soldering iron is on, you can see from all the smoke. And we're gonna go ahead and get the satisfying whoosh. I still had some solder on my iron because I don't clean it all the time. I should clean it more, but I don't, so. I actually had plenty of solder to go around here, but for example, we'd put it down on and then push the solder into the soldering iron and then let go. Do not hold it for too long. You will burn through stuff. That is not good. We've got plenty of solder here and because of the flux, it went right to it. Now we're going to take our wires and I strategically have the wires oriented where they're gonna go on the motherboard. The first one, the one closest to my finger is L. And since this is backwards right now, we're gonna have the L face to our right. I'm gonna get it with the tweezers here, just so we're a little more stable. And boom. We're gonna do the same thing, but on the opposite way for right. And boom. And then we're gonna go back to the left side for select. And it's that simple. All of our wires are connected to the ribbon cable. I'm unplugging my soldering iron and putting it on its stand. A lot easier than just turning it off. Then do not soak this part with your IPA. If you're new to this, I wouldn't even recommend directly putting the IPA down. Uh, if you do want to start doing this stuff regularly, I would use a secondary toothbrush for any flux cleaning. This says it's no clean flux. I don't think you have to, but it's really sticky, so I do. And a toothbrush. It's really good at getting this, the flux out. And then I'm using a paper towel here to uh, get the rest of it up here. We can peel this guy back here, grab the green tab, pull, don't let go. And then do not touch the black part of the screen and put this in the top leftmost corner. Well, let's pause for a second. So uh, here I am later doing this again. Uh, and here is where I went wrong. Do use this. Do use the spacer. It should go in like this. Put it in the very right end. We can go ahead and put our screen in like this. And we'll just peel it back. It's incredibly difficult to do, honestly. Got to insulate this one. I'm gonna put this in first, like that, loosely, and then I'm gonna slide this in right here, so it's all the way up and all the way back. And then we can resume with the other tutorial. Sorry, I messed up. Press down very gently, and we're gonna flip it over. We're gonna peel this. Then I like to pinch it like that. Still not touching the glass or the screen because you don't want to have any fingerprints. 
We're even going to do a quick little spray there. Boom. And then we'll leave the uh, protective film on just so we don't accidentally scratch it while we're working on the machine. And there's honestly probably the hardest part done. Now we can go ahead and put all the buttons in. Here are our end pieces. There's the right button, which we'll actually put on our left. It's also got the LED tube in there. That's what I've been looking for, so we're gonna put that in. I almost always forget to put the light diffusion tube in, which you don't need it, but it looks better if you do have it in there. And these buttons are still in their injection molding. They should break away cleanly enough. This has got a little bit of a snag. You can either sand it down very gently or you can use something like flush cutters to get that down if you're having troubles with fitment issues. But it should all be fine. They wouldn't do it like this if it wasn't fine. Oh, this one's got two power switches. I'm actually not going to use the purple power switch because I, I kind of want to go like a Google Pixel on this and have a, a different colored power switch since it's available for me. But we're also going to go ahead and get these out because we need these little tabs. We need these tabs to go into the L and R buttons. I don't think it really matters how you flip it as long as the fatter end goes into the button and you can just pop it in right there do the same thing for the other side boom then we can put d-pad a is on the outside and b is on the inside and then we can just put both the start and select in this is a little different from your normal start and select buttons. These start and select buttons are normally uh, all membrane on the Game Boy Advance. Really on everything except for the SP and the micro. So they do it a little differently here. Probably should have put the buttons in afterwards. But that's why you watch the full tutorial before you get started. I'll just not worry about the buttons and actually get the other buttons out of the way real quick. And we're gonna grab our board again. We're gonna have it oriented like this. We're going to plug the soldering iron back in. This time I'm not gonna use flux, but again, if you feel more comfortable with it, I would highly recommend using flux. And we're gonna solder to this joint called TP2, that is, TP2, it's right there, labeled right above it. If you wanna try not using flux, still put it down where you wanna solder, and push the solder into the iron, lift up. You should have a pretty sweet joint there. I use rosin core solder, so there is a little flux in the solder, but not too much, and this stuff you don't have to clean up. We're gonna take that top wire and push it right in. Unplugging the soldering iron once again, and then I'm going to push all of the uh, the wires up through where the uh, where the cable comes out, and then we're gonna flip this over. Make sure these two wires aren't underneath it, and then we're gonna grab this foam right here, and that's where we're gonna st we're gonna stick it right over the top of that ribbon cable and then set it back down in. Don't push it all the way in yet, just because we wanna make sure that these wires are coming out of that slot. Make sure the other wire's tucked away because we don't need it sticking out anywhere. Sometimes it's easier to just lift it up to get it into place. And then now I'm just gonna go ahead and screw the motherboard down because we shouldn't have to lift this up anymore. I'm reusing the old screws. Uh, hopefully that doesn't completely ruin the shell. Sometimes if you screw it too hard on these aftermarket shells, they can poke through, but it looks like uh, I did a good job. You can still slide the L and R buttons through. If you're worried about that, don't worry about it. <laughs> now, everything is down there. You know what, actually, 
I'm going to pull these out just in case. Uh, <laughs> did all that for nothing. Because we are going to solder one more time. And we are going to solder to the leftmost posts here. And that's why we oriented these to the correct sides. So uh, we don't have to 50-50 it. We've got 50-50 this right now. And since there's already solder here, we can just reheat it. Stick it in the solder blob, and it's that simple. You guys might want to actually see that this time on the good cam. And boom. Then what I like to do is I like to fold these around the, cap the capacitors. That way it kind of cements itself in, and it's not going to be any in the way of any screw holes. You want to avoid this, uh, the screw holes as much as possible, because if you screw through the wire and it will go through the wire, uh, it'll kind of ruin that connection. There's no, you can't really reach the capacitor down here with this wire, so you kind of just got to make sure it's in the right spot. Then we can fold the wire sticking out into the connector. Boom. And it's that simple. Just pushing those two in, make sure they're down tight, and you should be good to go. Beware, there are two different ends that are for the connectors. There is a 40 pin and a 32 pin connector. Uh, just kind of luck of the draw with the uh, Game Boy Advance models. Uh, you will have to use the other end of the ribbon cable, but these mod kits work for all the models of Game Boy Advance. Not the SPs, but you know what I mean. Here's what it looks like for the 32 pin connector. You're gonna wanna bend the fatter one back. And what's nice with the bracket, is you can put it all down like that so it's not gonna flop around on you. And then the same thing, just slide that in like so. And lock it in. Boom. So from here, we can put the buttons back in for the 18th time. We will put that off to the side for just a moment. I will be digging out the screws for this. Peel this protective tape back. We're gonna line it up like that. And it should, there we go. Should pop into those two little posts. And then you're gonna wanna use the the flat screwdrivers here. And it really does not matter where you screw it in. There are four screw holes. It does look like it comes with all four of the screws. You don't need to put all of them in. Even the original Game Boy Advance only has two of them in. There's only two right there, boom, boom. I have them offset, so it's gonna bug me. So I'll finish it off. <laughs> I'm gonna slide this through there. You're gonna wanna make sure it also gets through these two holes here. Sorry, my angle isn't the best. And then you're gonna wanna push that through till it hits that loop there. And boom, we have assembled a brand new battery contact. We can remove the battery door. And right here on the left side, we're just going to slot that in. I'm gonna slot that in just like that until it clicks. I said until it click. I guess it doesn't click. There it is. Don't forget your power switch. The bumpy side is gonna go down. Then just double checking none of our screw holes have a wire in the way. Cool. We can set that down. And I am once again gonna use the original screws you know what for the outside ones i'm actually going to use the aftermarket ones switching back to the tri-wing then we're going to very carefully place this sticker down and it's crooked <laughs> How did I not grab batteries? 
I just went ahead and grabbed a lot of batteries. And it's as simple as boom with force. The uh, old one is not, not as strong as the new one. We can go ahead and put the battery cover on, put the flash cart in, give her the old peel. And let's uh, see how we did. You're kidding me. You're really kidding me. So it's been a couple days. The thing is, I finished it. It didn't turn on. I had a ton of troubles with the, the Game Boy part of it. And, well, it works. It works just fine. The uh, the only thing is, uh, I forgot to put this bracket in, and you definitely should use this bracket. Because uh, I'm used to other shells that just have the spacing built in for the IPS display, and uh, yeah, I messed up on this one. So, we're going to take this apart. And the reason why we're starting over, which you don't have to start over. The other thing is, I, I had to take it apart so much that uh, I broke three screw posts on this thing. There's quite a bit of separation here, and I can't get it to close anymore because the screw posts are broke. Now, this is a review, and I have to be honest, and like, even if I was being paid, I would be completely honest, but I bought another shell with my own money. They sent me the other two, and then I bought another shell so we can replace it because I actually like the shell a lot. It's really cool. It feels very nice in the hand, and I love everything about that. The only problem is, even if I'm going in and out and in and out, screwing and unscrewing, that sounds so wrong. <laughs> Don't take that out of context. The screw posts just should not break, especially three of them. And the thing with this is I've used Extreme Rate a lot, and I've never had this problem. So I feel like this is just a one-off thing. So that's why I bought another one to test and make sure. If one of the screw posts breaks on the new shell, then, then we'll know for sure that it's, it's just a bad shell. Am I risking working with Extreme Rate again for this? Yeah. <laughs> I'd like to work with them more in the future because I really like their shells, but I gotta be honest. And this is half review, half tutorial. I ended up reaching out to them in an email and they can confirm that the warranty will cover broken screw posts. Cool. Let's test all the buttons. Everything seems to check out with the buttons. Everything looks good. I unscrewed it and screwed it back in a couple of times, but let's use the, the big boy for it. I unscrewed everything and screwed it back in twice with this guy, the auto one. And I did everything twice with the manual one. I uh, wasn't like super careful, but I wasn't like overly rough. All the screw posts checked out. It was either a fluke or I was really careless when with the first shell. But I wanted to include everything just so you guys get a good idea for the review of this. I'm going to be honest. I really do think it was just a fluke. And plus, every third party shell, even the OEM shells, the screw posts break. They're thin pieces of plastic that you drive pieces of hard metal through. You can turn it left until you hear the click and you can find the threads, but with stuff like this, there are no threads. It's brand new. But yeah, that's, uh, I think that's it. The shell is honestly a really good shell. The feel of these shells are awesome. Anything clear in purple looks awesome in my book. That's why I requested the purple. <laughs> and as you should with all shells you're working on, be careful with the screw posts because they do break easily. Thank you to Extreme Rate for uh, sending these out. I feel bad that it broke, but honestly, it's just it's how life goes sometimes. I would love to continue working with you in the future, but I understand if <laughs> this is the end of the road. I still have great things to say about them. So eventually in the future, don't know when, I will eventually mod this on a Mod Monday live stream. Just keep an eye out for that. I don't I don't know when I'm going to do that yet because I don't have the right kit for that shell. But just watch all the Mod Monday streams. They're really cool. But I think that's going to be it for this video. If you guys enjoyed, please listen to Brittany. 
If you're new here, please subscribe. I promise I don't mess up every single video. But hey, if you like to actually see the real stuff, everything that goes on, I don't cut out all of my mistakes like a lot of other people would. I like to show it off how it will actually go and especially if you're a first time modder this is something that very well could happen to you even with my experience a lot of things could go wrong if you want to follow me on instagram twitter all those awesome places you can find links to them down below also for patreon i'm working on exclusive videos that you can only see if you're subscribed there so check that link down below if you want to be like these guys right here they're awesome and of course check out the website if you want to buy this or anything else Oh, I should also mention that uh, I'm not exactly sure what the discount is, but I'll put it right here. I will have affiliate links to Amazon and Extreme Rates website. If you use my link for the Extreme Rate website, you will actually get a discount there. There might be a code too, not sure, but Amazon, you're paying full price. But I think that's all for now, so I will see you guys in the next one. Later, guys. I'm honestly not exactly sure how to use this. I know this is a bracket. This almost looks like the Game Boy Color. I'm not exactly sure how this one works. I, I mean, it wouldn't be in the Game Boy Advance one if it wasn't for the Game Boy Advance. Of all of the Game Boys, this is not really one you need a bracket for. To me, it is unnecessary because uh, this is probably the easiest mod kit to do.